everyone. So, I think last night, I got about three more subscribers to 55 subscribers. Thank you all for subscribing. Woo! Anyways, so, I have some exciting news before I get to chapter five. On the weekends, on Saturday and Sunday, if we're not busy, we're going to be doing map. Me and my grandfather are going to be doing math reviews. So you all know, so that means we're going to be teaching all kids math. You already know what 1 plus 1 is and 2 plus 2. 1 plus 1 equals 2 and 2 plus 2 equals 4. You know that. Anyways, I have to do a lot of hard questions when I'm in grade 5. Anyways, math is important. Alright? Math is really important. And we use it everywhere. And same with reading. Reading's important as well. If you go to school, get your book smarts in and get good grades, do your homework, that's how you'll go to the next grade. And next year, I'm going to be in middle school. I'm still going to be going to the same school because it goes up to grade 8. But I'm going to be a middle school student next year. And that's exciting, because when you're in middle school, they're at high school too, they, they you're going to need to know all your multiplication times tables and stuff like that. It's going to be hard work. When you get to high school, you'll be doing exams. And exams are very hard. But anyways, we got to get to reading. Chapter 5, The Space Race. The United States space program began in the late 1950s, only a little more than 50 years earlier. In 1903, Wilbur and Orville Wright flew the very first airplane in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Yet, by mid-century, air travel is common at the end of World War II. New planes were developed. They had jet engines. They flew at faster and faster speeds reaching higher and higher altitudes. Rockets were developed that could travel far into space. In 1955, the White Horse, the White House announced plans go beyond the high-speed air travels. Various scientists were working to launch a satellite and unmanned craft into space, which, where it would orbit Earth. Then on October 4th, 1957, news flashed around the world. Soviet scientists had launched a satellite called Sputnik. 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 One. It was only the size of a beach ball, weighed less than 200 pounds. It traveled around the Earth in a little less than 100 minutes. The space age was born. The space race started the same day the goal was the moon. Would it be the United States or Soviet Union? Soviet Union? After World War, Two, the Soviet Union and the United States emerged as the two great superpowers. They, they, they also enemies. They were also enemies. The Soviet Union was a communist nation. The United States, a demissary, feared that the Soviets would force our countries to become combust too. The period became known as the Cold War. There were no battery battles between armies. Instead, each side built up huge storehouses of atomic bombs. The question was whether either nation would drop an atomic bomb and start World, World War II. The launch of Sputnik one showed that the Soviet Soviet technology was most advanced in the world. The Soviet space program was very secretive 
and did not let any failures become public. Netherless, the Soviets had done something amazing. They also, they also did it at first. Meanwhile, NASA, National Aeronautics and Space Administration failed again and again at once launching a spacecraft into orbit. One rocket got only four inches off the ground. Only a month after Sputnik 1 came, a much bigger Sputnik 2, with a dog named Lake Lako as its passenger. <coughs> then oh, Lily, Lily! Sorry about this, folks. Just my dogs. <coughs> It was just my dog's barking. Anyways, that's the space built. Nick 2 with the dog named Lincoln is attached to Then in April 1960, it was a jumped even further ahead than the space ring. They put a man into space. His name was Yuri A. Gagarin. Overnight, he became the world famous. Only three weeks later, Sent an American test pilot named Alan Shepard soaring into space aboard a Mercury spacecraft. The flight lasted almost 15 minutes, and Shepard piloted the the vehicle himself. Something gay grin had not been done. In the United States, Shepard was given a hero welcome upon his safe return, but in the history books, he read. He would always remain the second human being in space, not the first. John F. Kennedy was president of dawn of the space race. He took office in January of 1961. He was determined to see the United States pull ahead of the Soviets. Soviets. The Soviets. The president prodded Congress to pour billions of dollars in the NASA John F. Kennedy, which was based in House Um Spacecraft, however, were launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida. Cape Canaveral? Cape, Cape Canaveral, Florida, because the area is mild weather. Mac Mac launches could take place at any time of the year. In a famous speech but before Congress, President Kennedy said, I believe that the nation should commit itself to achieving the goal. The goal. Before the decade came out, is out. Only a landing, landing a, moon, a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth. By the end of the decade, that meant American astronaut had to reach the moon before 1970. Too many people that seemed impossible dream. The challenge had been issued. NASA would do it all to make the dream as a reality. The USSR alley was an enemy. By 1945, the USSR also known as Russia's of the Soviet Union, was fighting on the same side as the Great Britain and the United States in World War II. When the war ended in 1945, when Germany's teeth defeat, the, the friendship between the United States and the USSR ended. Two, both countries were very powerful. The United States saw that the USSR hoped to gain control of the other countries in different parts of the world. That would make the USSR too powerful. World War II was over, but the Cold War had begun and lasted until the collapse of USSR in 1991. I just want to see them. Astronaut Neil Armstrong is tomorrow, and it's chapter six. Just one.
wanna see. I just wanna see what picture. Yeah, that's gonna be tomorrow. Hold on, where was it? I don't know where it was. Page 54. Chapter 6 is tomorrow. I'm gonna ask a few math questions before I go. Does anyone know what 1 minus 1 is? That's nothing. If you answer that, you're correct. Now, I'm just doing easy warm ups for young kids now. I'm going to get into like older kids stuff in a minute. Now what's 2 minus 2? Equals nothing either. And now let's get into the harder questions. What is 54 minus 54? You still know the answer. 0. Now what is 6 times 1? 6 times 1. It might be... It, the multiplication and division might be harder for younger children because they're in kindergarten and grade one and two and three and four, and they don't know multiplication yet. But you know what six times one is. So every time you find a one in it, it's always the number you um, put it first. With so that would be six. So now I have a question: What is five times three? That would equal 15. It's like groups. So if you go on a sheet of paper and put groups of that, then you'll eventually get the right answer. All right? But in tests, like exams, you can't do that. When you're in high school, you're not going to get to write on a sheet of paper. you got to do that work. All right? Trust me, you have to do work in high school. All right? And I also thank you for more subscribers. Remember, subscribe. Cheer, everyone. Subscribe. Subscribe.